In this video, we're going to be changing out the current spindle that we have on our Avid CNC. That's a six horsepower head that I ordered probably from Amazon or eBay a long, long time ago. But now we're super excited. Six horsepower is a lot, but we're stepping it up to 8.7 horsepower. The spindle that we're going to be using is available through Avid CNC. So thanks very much, guys. We have lots of parts to change. But first, we're going to be comparing the spindle that we currently have to the new spindle that we're putting on by surfacing one side of a beautiful curly maple slab. Then once we get the new spindle on, we'll surface the opposite side and we'll kind of compare the differences. We'll see what's going on. So we've got to change the spindle, we've got to change the control box, but first we're going to make some sawdust. We're going to get it up on the CNC. We're going to balance the warp and the twist that it has. We're going to put some wedges underneath it, clamp those wedges, and then we're going to start making some sawdust. We're going to get one side flat and then we'll change out the spindle get the second side flat. Slabs on the CNC it literally had zero warp twist on it, sitting perfectly flat, but we still need to put it on the CNC because it doesn't fit through the planer. We're going to have a little fun with this one. We're going to take the dust collection off and we're going to show the cutter, so we're going to be flying stuff everywhere. Andy, you better put on some safety glasses. And how we operate our CNC currently is just with the keyboard. I just push my buttons here, CNC does what I want it. We also run programs to do the flattening. We will be upgrading, there's a clap for you folks, we will be updating uh, to like a handheld type device to control the CNC, but as of right now, we just use a keyboard. So this is the cutter head that we typically use. This is an RC2252 from Amana Tools. We don't use the two bottom cutters and only the side cutters, and we just noticed our side cutter is pretty much shattered. So it has a carbide insert that we're going to be changing out right now, so we're going to put fresh inserts on this. And the other bit we use, though, is this bad boy. Here, look at the size difference. Woohoo! This is an Amana Tool RC2259, and it has five inserts, and they actually cut on a chamfer and have a little flat bottom on them. This leaves an extra, this is a great, great finish. Don't get me wrong. This is a beautiful bit. We put you know, t tens of thousands of board feet through this bit, and it turns out fantastic. The head I currently have is just almost not enough power to run this head properly, so I'm very excited to see the results with this bit with the new spindle. Inserts are changed. I was able just to turn the one of them. They are four-sided, so you can get four uses out of it. But if it's shattered, sometimes you can't turn it because it won't register properly. And you do want both the bits registering properly. Uh, sorry, both the inserts registering properly on the bit. We move this machine at typically full speed, just over 600 inches per minute, almost always cutting with the grain direction. So we're going the lengthwise of the machines. We're usually taking 0.1 to 0.2 of an inch of wood in thickness. Um, basically depends on the species of wood. I push it to the limits a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I kind of abuse this thing a little bit. I'm usually taking a depth cut of 0.2 inches. And when we do run a program, we do a step over of one inch. So uh, let's just get to it. All right, we surfaced one side of the slab. Got to say goodbye to my six horsepower head, although I have another woodworker who's taking it off my hands. He's also got his own Avid CNC. We're going to remove this, get the new head on there, change the wiring, new control box. We've got a lot of work ahead of us right now, but uh, we're not going to bore you with that. We'll give you a few shots, and then the head's going to be installed.
But now we have to run this wire. It has a lot more wires than my other one. Tons of pins in there. Super, super nice connection. So we're basically going to stick this on there, tighten her down, and then run this through the long cable chase all the way to its new control box, which is the next step to do after the cable. All right, the next step is the control boxes. This spindle comes with a brand new one. We got it right here. And it has a VFD in here, which is going to be controlling turning on and off the spindle, as well as the RPM of the spindle. Do closed. We have a cable that's going to connect the brand new control box of the spindle. We'll plug in here. And this is our original control box where your XYZ motors plug into, uh, your network cable to your computer, proximity sensors, as well as the zeroing out uh, doohickey that they have. I don't know what it's called. I opened it up, and this thing is full of sawdust. And you know what? Guilty on me. I don't open this up very often enough. We don't really clean it too often. With that said, never really had a hiccup. So we're going to get this cleaned out. We mounted a new board that these are going to mount on. I've been told they've upgraded their uh, circuit boards inside my original box. I've had this for four or five years now uh, for better efficiency or more control, something like that. So they were nice enough that when I got the new spindle, they sent along these two circuit boards. So we're going to change these out. Then we're going to be mounting these boxes, and then we're going to hook all the wires back up. All right, we've got the circuit boards changed over that they sent us. We've got our main boxes mounted on our new board that we put down here. And now we just got to hook up the spaghetti mess, all the wires back to it, wire in the VFD, and we should be rocking soon enough. Oh, whoo! <laughs> it's been a long day, a lot of figuring things out, but it's finally working. We got three phase, 220 volt, now going into the VFD. Our initial control box that we've always had, the circuit boards are all changed. We got things wired properly. So I installed Mach 4 on the computer. Looks really, really nice compared to the Mach 3. Avid has their own layout on the screen, super nice. And instead of me having to walk over to my VFD on the wall, I can turn my spindle on and off right here. I click on. Let's go check out. There she goes. And I can adjust the RPM. So I can go down to 12,000 and you'll notice the numbers change. So that's 12,000 RPM now. I can go all the way down, I think, to 4,000. All from the computer, and I'm also able to just to shut the spindle off right from here also. So super pumped. We're going to get the bit in here. We're going to surface the other side of the slab. Let's make some sawdust. All right, we've confirmed everything's working great. We have the half-inch collet in there and the same surfacing bit, the Amana RC2252, is in there. We're going to do the same type of surfacing as we did on the other side, and then we're also going to try this bad boy out too. So I'm going to strap up. Normally we would have dust collection on here. We're just doing this to have a little bit more fun, show you exactly what's going on with the cutter, uh, which does work pretty darn good. We hardly have any dust normally, but obviously we have no shroud at all. Whew, so she creates a lot of dust. Thank you, Dentech, for the respirator. Luke, I am your father. First impressions, this spindle is badass, I gotta say. Just the sound of it cutting, you can definitely tell there's way more power. Uh, but not only that, um, I think it's, it, it definitely runs more true, I guess would be the word. The other one, you could almost hear a little bit of vibration to it. We're using the exact same cutter, uh, probably better quality collet and nut as well, but just overall better quality, I think, in the entire spindle and the power. The finish is amazing. And we just quickly squared this thing up. We haven't trammed it totally perfectly yet, which I'm still going to do. Uh, but I'm, I'm insanely impressed with it. Super, super happy. Really happy, too. I can turn it on and off from the computer, control the RPM. I couldn't do that with my old one. Now for the beast. We're going to put in this bad boy. This is like 5-inch diameter, something like that. And we're going to do the final pass on the slab. Let's see how, uh, see how much wood we can pound off with this one, eh? <laughs> 
All right, we got the big beast in there, the RC2259. This is where I'm really liking this program already because I have a maximum RPM of 12,000 RPM where I was doing a little bit of calculating and trying to figure out before by adjusting the hertz on the VFD where it, it automatically does it right in the program, which is really, really nice. So let's see what kind of finish we can get with this bigger bit. I think it's going to turn out really, really nice. My six horsepower just wasn't enough power to run this bit, in my opinion. You could still do it, but a lot slower and not take as much wood. But I think this is really going to speed up our efficiency because we can take a much wider pass. We can probably take a two inch step over versus a one inch step over. If that's the case, that's two times efficiency right there. Sweet. All right, we made a few more passes. Super, super happy so far. Although uh, creating all that sawdust without the dust boot on was, was uh, really uh, getting to Andy. It was really shooting at him. The camera was getting crazy, crazy dusty. So we decided to put our old dust boot back on. I quickly made up some brackets, added some carpet. It actually works pretty good. But we will be making a new dust boot soon in the future. We'll pop off my blast gate. There we go. Get my on there. So let's finish this slab off. We're going to give you the final impressions of the bits, the spindle, and we're going to see how beautiful this entire slab is because it is curly through and through. All right, awesome. We're now going to run a program. I have manual programs that we've written. It'll be the first time using Mach 4 in a program, so we'll see how it goes. So we need to be greater than 50 inches wide and longer than 78. So, so we have our programs written in a way that when I'm sitting at the computer, it's the top left-hand side we're going to position our spindle to. So I just need to align my uh, dust boot to the edge of the slab, and I need to have the bit to the to the end of the slab. We have a little extra both ways, this way, as well as the width wise. So I don't have to be super, super accurate with this setup. I'm now going to click the XYZ, home everything, turn on my desk collection, and hit the start button. And Mr. Robot should make this slab nice and flat. So wish us luck. Overall, super, super happy with this upgrade. We went from a six horsepower, kind of no name spindle to this 8.7 Hitco, Heitco. I don't know how to say that. It says high technology components. This is directly from Avid CNC. Um, wiring connections, much, much cleaner than my old one. I'm able to turn it on and off via the program, control the RPM, as well as I'm sure do a bunch of other things that I'm gonna have to learn now. Uh, we used our old dust boot, but we will have a video coming soon of making a dual six inch dust boot inspired by Jay Bates. Thank you, Jay Bates. Probably don't watch this, but thanks to everyone else who puts out the information about all this stuff. It's pretty easy. You don't have to, don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can see what everybody else has done. 
and then basically adjust it to your needs. Very happy now because we can run this bigger bit um, more confidently. Before I'd have to slow the machine movement down a lot and I wasn't gaining efficiency and the cut quality was still very similar. I'm now able to not move the machine full speed but we can go about, uh, and not necessarily half the speed either. So we are gaining efficiency, we'll be able to surface a little bit quicker and even leave a little bit better of a finish with this bit. We're still mixing it up, we're gonna use the smaller bit, the RC2252 as well as the R 2259, just depending uh, what we're surfacing, I think. One thing to keep in mind, costs. The inserts on the smaller bit are like three to four dollars per insert. The inserts on this bigger bit are like twenty-five dollars, I think, per insert. So if you hit a piece of metal and you toast your inserts, well, you're gonna be out, uh, you know, eight dollars versus five times twenty-five. Ding, ding, hundred and twenty-five dollars. Big difference there. So maybe if you have lumber that has, has gnarly stuff in it, maybe Maybe you know there's metal in that or you don't know what's in there. Uh, that smaller bit might be the better one to go with because the costs won't be as much. Again, overall, super, super happy. Thank you, Avid CNC. That's the end of this video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you're considering a CNC for yourself, highly recommend the Avid CNC products. Nothing but pure quality at a very affordable pricing as well. Now we gotta get back to real work. We gotta throw some fresh slabs on here and get them surfacing. Any questions, comments, leave them below. Smash that like button and obviously subscribe. And everyone, make it a great one.